An interesting phenomenon lies within the landscape of a small area in southern New Mexico. Fine sand, pure white, like nothing you've ever seen anywhere else. Unique geology, like so many other national parks, helped to create this amazing environment that has delighted humans for centuries. But that's not to say the area hasn't had its fair share of tragedies either. Today, we're going to look at some of the most important events and places of a national park brought into the 21st century. Today, we take a look at White Sands. So let's get right down to the main question. What are these sands, and where do they come from? While most sands, like you would see at a beach, or over in Indiana Dunes National Park, for example, are made from quartz crystals, the grains of white sands are made from gypsum. The gypsum came from a shallow sea, called the Permian Sea, that existed around 280 million years ago, when Earth's land masses were lumped together as one megacontinent called Pangaea, I think just before the time of the dinosaurs. Over millions of years, changing sea levels led to a buildup of that special material, gypsum, on the sea floor. Then around 70 million years ago, just before the dinosaurs went extinct, Earth's tectonic plates experienced a surge of activity, pushing towards each other, creating the Rocky Mountains, which can be seen in many national parks today, including Yellowstone, Glacier, and of course the park named after the mountains themselves in Colorado. However, in New Mexico, around 30 million years ago, the tectonic plates switched directions and spread apart to create two distinct mountain ranges, leaving a place called the Tularosa Basin in the middle. The next step that created the dunes once again involved water. About 2 million years ago, the Rio Grande River wove its way to the basin, but was blocked up, and therefore the Lake Otero was created. Remember the gypsum that was at the bottom of the sea? Well, it was thrust up into the mountains and then at the end of the most recent ice age, rain and snowmelt carried the gypsum back down into the basin of Lake Otero. And when the lake evaporated, all that was left was the dry lake bed, known today as Alkali Flat. Finally, winds eroded the gypsum into fine white grains of sand, which accumulated over time into the dune field visitors see today. That's a lot of geology. Let's turn to something a little bit more vibrant. The animals of the park. Uniquely adapted for life in the dunes, creatures like the desert box turtle and prairie rattlesnake hunt for food during the summer and hibernate, or brumate in the case of the turtle, look it up, during the winter to survive the cold. The park's mammals include the Apache pocket mouse, a source of food for snakes, black-tailed jackrabbit, which can run at speeds up to 40 miles an hour, and the coyote and the bobcat, stealth hunters of the night. The feathered creatures at White Sands include the burrowing owl that lives life on the ground, the greater roadrunner, the state bird of New Mexico and the type of roadrunner from the Looney Tunes cartoon, and the red-tailed hawk, a common sight across North America, but an amazing bird nonetheless. So, you know about why the area is so unique, and who lives there, but how can you as a visitor enjoy the park? Start at the White Sands Visitor Center located just inside the park entrance to get information on any places you want to go or are about to hear about in this video before heading out into the dunes themselves. A few trails lie at the edge of the dunes, including the Dune Life Trail, and a little further into the dunes is the Interdune Trail, an elevated boardwalk that gives visitors a short jaunt among the sands. However, it is in the back portion of the park where the pavement ends and the gypsum hills reign supreme that the most immersive trails can be found. The Alkali Flat Trail, a five-mile loop, goes deep into white sands and provides a remote experience for the hiker looking for solitude. Not looking to go hiking? Try going sledding instead! Bring your own sled or purchase one at the park store, and head out to the dunes for a fun adventure. The National Park, like most national parks, is an excellent place for photography. Bring a camera and snap a few pictures of the spectacular New Mexican landscape that is rich with history. Speaking of history, we close out today's video with a brief summary of the human impact on the White Sands area. The prehistoric Lake Otero discussed earlier was a great place for early peoples to come and inhabit, and they did for a couple of thousand years before the lake dried up. The first prominent group to live near White Sands after the drying up of the lake were the Jornada Mogollon, who used the smaller Lake Lucero and the surrounding gypsum salts to their advantage to survive. They lived in the area until about 650 years ago, when they moved out of the basin for good. The group of American Indians known as the Apaches resided at White Sands during the time when the Spanish first made their appearance in New Mexico, and would eventually develop tensions with the Spaniards and nearby tribes. The Spanish visitors don't mention White Sands very much in their travels, but artifacts have been uncovered in the park dating back to around those times, so there is no doubt they were there. After a revolution and a war against Mexico, the White Sands finally came under the possession of the United States in the mid-1800s. After this event, several ranching communities were established near the dunes, including those of the Lucero brothers in 1897, whom the above-mentioned Lake Lucero is named after. In 1940, the Lucero Ranch came under the jurisdiction of the National Park Service. The final major historical piece in the puzzle of White Sands National Park has its background and military roots. Sixty miles north of White Sands, in the summer of 1945, only a week after the White Sands Missile Range was created, the world's first atomic bomb was detonated at the Trinity site. 
It would be only a few weeks later when the second and third bombs would be dropped over Japan, ending the Second World War. Tours to the Trinity site are available twice a year to remember and reflect upon this historic moment in U.S. history. The White Sands had only been a monument for 12 years before this event in 1933, and it would not be until over half a century after the bomb test in 2019 that White Sands would be upgraded to a national park. So what is there to take away from the White Sands? An interesting geology lesson, yes, but so much more than that. Adaptive species that live and die here, the excitement of discovering a new adventure, and a history of triumph, but also a warning for the future. It is up to you to determine how you view and comprehend the vast legacy of America's 62nd National Park. Until next time, this has been REC Adventures covering White Sands National Park briefly.